Welcome back to another one of Mr. Maze's stats videos. I know they're the most exciting thing in the world. Just kidding. Um, but anyways, <laughs> let's go ahead and get into this example. Um, I want to conduct a hypothesis test for a mean, but this time I want to uh, use a small sample. And I'm emphasizing this because a couple of my other videos showed how to f conduct a hypothesis test for means with a large sample, and things are slightly different. So with small samples, um, I'm going to eventually use a T distribution instead of a Z distribution. Um, <clears throat> and uh, it's, because I'm going to use a T distribution, things are going to change just a little bit. My test statistic is going to use this formula. So I'm going to get to this formula in a little Little bit but let's go through the process first of all let's read the problem an environmentalist estimates that the mean waste recycled by it by adults in the United States is more than one pound per person per day now one of the things that I like to do is highlight <clears throat> some of the important information in the in the in the problem itself if you don't have you know you, you, your teacher probably doesn't want you to write in your book but maybe you could just write it off to the side so is more than is important so here we go let me read it again an environmentalist estimates that the mean waste recycled by adults in the United States is more than one one pound per person per day. You want to test this claim. You find that the mean waste recycled per person per day for a random sample of 12 adults, so random sample of 12, and the United States is 1.46 pounds, and the standard deviation is 0.58 pounds. At alpha equals 0.05, can you support the claim? I'm going to go through this process fairly quickly. And if you're not sure what I'm doing by using phantoms as my acronym for the steps, then you may want to go back and watch one of my other videos on uh, hypothesis testing for large samples. I go into that a little bit more in depth. <clears throat> but here we go. P in phantom stands for uh, parameter statement, which is basically the claim. So this is what I want to test. I want to test the claim, and what is that claim? That the mean recycled waste for U.S. adults an L in there, adults, is more than one pound. One pound per day. Right there. So that's what I'm going to test. I want to test the claim that the mean recycled waste for U.S. adults is more than one pound per day. Now I'm going to write my null and alternative hypotheses using this claim that's up here. Well, the claim says more than, and that's important. When I see that this, this claim, where is it at, says is more than one pound per day, I know that in my alternative, I have to say this. The mean is more than one pound per day, and that is my claim. The null hypothesis, which is up here, in turn has to be the mean is less than or equal to one pound per day. Now, the reason that I know that the claim goes down here in the alternative is because the null hypothesis always has to have an equal sign in it. So it's either going to be greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or just an equal sign. Well, this claim says is more than. So that tells me that the claim has to be down here in the alternative. It doesn't say at least. It doesn't say at most. It says is more than, and that's this symbol right here. So that's why I know these symbols go together. If you need some more information on that, I would go and watch a couple of my other videos on how to write a hypothesis test. <clears throat> well, now I get to A, which stands for assumptions and conditions. And there's two things that I want to check, two conditions. One is the randomization condition. And the random randomization condition is to assure that my sample represents the population. And in this case, 
it tells me right where it is. You find that the mean waste recycle per day per person for a random sample of 12 is what it is. So since it tells me that they collected a random sample, this condition is satisfied because the sample was randomly collected. If for some reason it did not tell me that the sample was randomly collected, I would have to assume that it was randomly collected. That's why this is called assumptions and conditions. Now, The other assumption or the other condition I need to check is the nearly normal condition. And the only way you can really check the nearly normal condition is to check to see if your raw data will give you a histogram that is nearly normal or bell-shaped. Well, I don't have a histogram. I don't have the raw data or the histogram, and it doesn't tell me that it's normally distributed. So I'm going to have to assume this. We will assume the data are whoops are nearly normal there are always a couple of conditions that you should check when you're conducting a hypothesis test and if for some reason you cannot actually check the condition you have to assume that it is correct that's why step a is called assumptions and conditions so going through phantoms P H A N N is my next step and that's name the test so this is going to be a T test because I have a small sample okay right there my sample size is 12 and it's a T test the other thing that I should say it, or decide is it a right tailed test a left tailed test or a two tailed test well, you always look at the null hypothesis and the direction that the null hypothesis is opening tells you whether it's a right tailed test or a left tailed test this mouth if you will opens to the right so this is a right tailed test in fact this is a right tailed T test how do I know that it is it is right tailed because of the null hypothesis it opens up to the right how do I know that it is a T test because my sample size is small and this is a test for means and finally the last thing that I should put right here is that this is a right tailed T test with alpha equal to 0.05. Alpha is my level of significance and I always want to mention that right here at this spot. All right, now I get to T, the test statistic. And that's where I'm going to use this formula. <clears throat> so let's just plug everything in and I use this formula to eventually find something called the p-value. So here we go. Let's plug everything in that I know. Well, I was told that from my sample X bar was 1.48. I know from my null hypothesis that mu is equal to 1. Right there it is. Mu is equal to 1. The standard deviation of my sample was given to me, and that was 0.58, and my sample size n is 12. Now when I do the math here, I've already done it ahead of time, so I'll let you look at that if you need to. But when I do the math, I end up getting a T or test statistic of 2.75. And usually if you round off to two decimal places, you're going to be in pretty good shape. All right, so there is my test statistic. I'll put a circle around this because that is important. There is my test statistic. And what I am going to do, let me pull a picture in here. Since it's nearly normal, I am going to use a normal, or I'm going to use a t-distribution, which is bell-shaped, and my t-distribution is going to have, I have to look at my degrees of freedom, okay? If you're, if you've gotten this far in the video and you uh, have got, you know, that you need this for, a, for one of your classes, you should know that degrees of freedom is needed for a t distribution and in this case the degrees of freedom is n minus 1 
So for this particular question, it would be 12 minus 1, which is 11. So my degrees of freedom in this for this t distribution is 11. I need to keep that in mind. Because what I'm now going to do is I am going to find the area under this t distribution curve that I've got highlighted right here. Okay, That little tail is, is my p value. And that leads me to the next one, O. So if I go right here in phantoms, O stands for obtain the p-value. And my p-value is the area under the curve. There's my p-value right there. So how do I find it? Well, we're going to use our calculator. So let me pull my calculator up here. I should have had it open already, but here we go. I need to keep in mind that I'm going to use a T distribution. Come on, open up. Got a little bit of lag in my computer. Here we go. <clears throat> so here's what I'm going to use. Since I'm using a T distribution, I am going to hit second vars. And I want to arrow down to, or I want to slide my cursor down to number five, which says T C D F. Now before when we had a large sample we were using a normal model and that's why we're, we were using normal C D F. But now we're going to use a T distribution so we use T C D F. So I select number five and I need to give the calculator the left hand boundary and the right hand boundary of my shaded region. Well, the left-hand boundary is my test statistic, which is 2.75, and my right-hand boundary way over there, I'm just going to use positive 99. This should be something that's familiar to you. So I'm going to type this in, 2.75, comma, which is just above the 7, all the way to 99, and I need to hit comma one more time and tell the calculator how many degrees of freedom that I have. If I don't tell the calculator how many degrees of freedom that I have, then I won't get, my, uh, won't get the correct value for my p-value. When I hit enter, there it is. There is my p-value. Whoops, let me bring it back in here. My p-value is right there. So here we go. My p-value is equal to 0 0.009. All right, what do I do next? Well, I get to M. And M in phantoms stands for make a decision about the null hypothesis. So here we go. There's two things that come up. If you've watched one of my other videos, you probably, this should be familiar, but I'm going to go ahead and type it in here one more time. When we find a p-value, we then want to do this. If the p-value is less than or equal to alpha, let me put, that's my level of significance, then I reject the null hypothesis. Now, in contrast to that, if the p-value is greater than alpha, <clears throat> then I fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, one of those two things is going to happen. So I have to compare my, uh, my p-value to alpha. Well, in this case, my p-value is equal to 0 0.009, and alpha is equal to 0 0.05. All right, now it's time to go ahead and compare them. Well, in this case, alpha, or my p-value, is less than alpha, so I am going to reject the null hypothesis. And that's, what, that's something I need to write down. Since the p-value is less than alpha, 
I reject the null hypothesis. And the very last step is S, which stands for state your conclusion about the claim. So I've told everybody what I'm going to say or what I believe about the null hypothesis. What do I believe about the claim? Well, let's go way back up here. I am going to reject the null hypothesis. So since I am rejecting the null hypothesis, that means that I believe that the alternative is true. Since I believe the alternative is true, I have evidence to support the claim. The claim is the, is, it, is the alternative, and since I believe the alternative is true, my evidence supports the claim. So at the very end here, I'm going to go ahead and type this in. I would say <clears throat> there is enough evidence to support the claim that the mean <clears throat> recycled, recycled um, materials of a, a, let's say, a U.S. adult is more than one pound. Okay, and notice one of the key things that's in here is I'm saying that the evidence supports the claim that the mean recycled materials of a U.S. adult is more than one pound, and I really should put in here one pound per person per day. One pound per person per day. That, that takes care of everything. So I hope that this helps. Um, if you, you need some more examples, then um, keep watching my videos, and good luck in stats class.